Hi guys, Nada here and uh, today I'm going to talk about the brand new card from NVIDIA, the GTX 1660 Super that is actually being released today. Now, since NVIDIA didn't release a Founders Edition of this card, I'm just going to go over the first card we got, which is the Gigabyte Gaming OC that I have right here. Now, uh, according to NVIDIA, this card is supposed to be the best option if you're looking to buy a card that costs around 230 US dollars or 250 euros in Europe. And even though it's supposed to confuse the hell out of us with yet another name combination, it is actually going to bring some sense into this price segment. The 1660 Super has the same chip as the original GTX 1660. They only added much faster GDDR6 memory, which is actually a great idea because the original GTX 1660 was a great card for 1080p gaming, but it was lacking a bit of headroom for some newer titles on high settings. So uh, let's see if Nvidia managed to fix that. And uh, let's see how does this card actually compare to some of the other cards in this price segment. Let's go. This video is brought to you by the Corsair IQ465X RGB case that offers solid performance but also a lot of RGB as it comes with three LL120 addressable RGB fans and an RGB controller by default. Check it out using the links in the description below. So the first card we got was the Gigabyte Gaming OC model which I've seen on several occasions already. This is a dual slot three fan card that has a plastic but decent looking backplate and has consistently proven itself to be quiet, efficient, as well as affordable. Now, it might not be the most exciting design, but it does look decent, it matches with most hardware and gets the job done. Just don't expect much RGB from it because only the logo lights up, which is actually quite fine because you won't have to deal with RGB software. A single 8-pin power connector follows NVIDIA's spec for the 1660 Super, but it's possible we'll see some other layouts on other brands. On this one you get three display ports and one HDMI port, which is in line with most modern cards. Alright, so let's talk about uh, what most of you just care about and that is performance of this card. Now, it is very interesting because uh, this 1660 Super has the fast uh, GDDR6 memory just like the 1660 Ti, but the memory actually clocked faster than the one on the Ti. Now, the 1660 Ti still has a few more CUDA cores, but as you will see in most benchmarks, the GTX 1660 Super is actually right behind the Ti. And keep in mind, we are talking about two very decent factory overclocked cards with similar clock speeds. Now, there's still a few benchmarks where the extra cores put the 1660 Ti more ahead and you can generally overclock its memory further as well. So overall, the GTX 1660 Ti remains the better card, but I wouldn't consider the Ti a better deal unless the price difference was very, very small in your region. So for many titles and synthetic benchmarks right now, the GTX 1660 Super might as well be called a TI with a $50 price cut. With its performance, the GTX 1660 Super offers a nice performance boost for those of you that were looking to buy an RX 580 or an RX 590. The GTX 1660 Super is significantly faster, it is more efficient and the price premium isn't bad. The new Super also makes Nvidia look better versus the AMD Vega cards. Now, the Vega cards are still a bit faster on average, but they are more expensive and a lot less efficient. I'm going to compare more GTX 1660 Super cards over the next few weeks, but considering the low power consumption of the 1660 Super, thermals and noise shouldn't really be a big concern. Gigabyte's gaming OC models aren't the very cheapest, but they are consistently on the affordable end of the market. Now this card as well overclocks itself very nicely out of the box and we can see it stays very cool as well as completely silent. Just like the RX 5700 XT Roundup, the best GTX uh, 1660 Super will probably end up being any decent 2 or 3 fan card with a good price and availability in your region. But Gigabyte here sets a good standard and the expected 30-ish dollar price premium over the MSRP for a faster, cooler and super quiet card sounds very reasonable to me. Image sharpening is something that both Nvidia and AMD are focusing on. Both also now have an ultra low latency mode. And completely new we see the reshade feature which is a pretty damn cool new feature that is included in the latest drivers. 
so it will be available on other NVIDIA cards as well. It basically lets you apply a bunch of filters to your game. Some of these filters seem pretty pointless, like watercolor for example, but some are actually pretty fun, like the old film filter that I actually cannot wait to try out on the Outer Worlds game. Some options like uh, depth of field really show how powerful this tool can be, completely and accurately blurring the background in Far Cry 5 for example. And look, I can even make Borderlands 4 in under 10 seconds. Unfortunately, with these launches, I get very little time for testing beforehand, so I didn't get to properly performance test the reshade the feature. But I will admit it looks like a very nice option to tweak your experience or gameplay recordings or Ansel screenshots. I should also point out that this GTX 1660 Super does feature the Turing encoder, so that makes it a decent option for those of you looking to start to stream without a high-end CPU. Okay, so overall this uh, 1660 Super is a great card for 1080p gaming on very high settings or very high refresh rates in competitive gaming, giving you that extra headroom that the original GTX 1660 was missing. Now you're not gonna have RTX and it's not really good for uh, Quad HD AAA gaming, but that is not something you should expect from a card in this price range. Nvidia was always dominating that high-end segment, but it was always missing a card that is going to give you more performance for the price you're paying in that $200 to $300 or Euro segment. And that is exactly what this 1660 Super does. Now, it's great for those people that were considering an RX 580 or an RX 590, because it's going to give you more performance for just a small price bump. And it's great for those people who thought that the RTX 2060 or the uh, RX 5700 are just too expensive. As for the Gigabyte Gaming OC, if the pricing in your region is uh, good, you should just pick it up because this card actually comes with a very good factory overclock. It is very, very cool and you cannot really hear it under load. Now, if you want to pay a bit more for something that has more visuals, more RGB, it's more beefy, you can do that, it's completely up to you. But uh, if you're looking for a card that offers uh, great value for your money, then this card is going to be very hard to beat. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this new 1660 Super and about this review. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and yeah, see you next time.